Hello students, in this video we'll prove Abel's test for convergence of an infinite series. Abel's test is the following. It says given two sequences a k, k equals one from infinity, and b k, k equals one to infinity, such that two conditions are true. What are our conditions over here in these sequences? The first condition is that if Sn is a1 plus an, the partial sums the an, then Sn is less than or equal to c for all n and some c. In other words, the Sn, the partial sums of the an sequence, are uniformly bounded. They're all less than or equal to c. And then the second condition we're going to need is that the b monotonically decreased to zero, right? Then b1 bigger than or equal to b2, bigger than or equal to b3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, bigger than or equal to bn, so they're monotonically decreasing, and they decrease to zero. And the limit, as n tends to infinity, of the bn is equal to zero. If these two conditions are satisfied, then the following series converges. Then k goes from 1 to infinity of a k b k converges. Excellent. Here's the proof. Proof. Let epsilon be greater than zero and pick um, pick n and n such that such that what? Such that these bn's, such that bn is less than epsilon over twice this bound to c if n is bigger than or equal to n capital over here. Okay, great. Now let's recall summation by parts. So recall that the sum k goes from m up to n, so for m less than n, of a k b k, this is s n s n b n plus 1 minus s m minus 1 bm plus the sum k goes from m up to n of sk and then bk minus bk plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to do a slight variant of this version of summation by parts. So for our argument, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pluck off this last term over here. And what will that last term look like? That last term looks like sn and then bn minus bn plus 1 over there, right? So what the effect of this is, is the fact that it's going to take this term over here and cancel with that term over there, like so. And then what do we have then? We can see that we'll have an sn, sn, bn over here. And then this index goes down to n minus 1. And that just helps me uh, organize my terms more efficiently in the, in the, for the remainder of the proof. OK, excellent. So that's end of summation of my parts. Now let me assume, so let's let n be bigger than m be bigger than n plus that n capital, so that's my range for m and n, okay? For this range, what will we estimate? Let's estimate our sum. The sum, k goes from m up to n of a k b k, will be all of these terms over here. It's going to be the sum s n b n minus s m minus 1 b m, okay? And then plus the sum k goes from m up to n minus 1 of bk minus bk plus 1, like that, with times sk, of course, times sk. Okay, that's, my, that's what our expression looks like. Now, what can we notice over here? These terms over here are greater than or equal to 0. These are positive terms, or non-negative, non-negative. So I can make this, so this is non-negative, this is non-negative, and this is non-negative. I can make this whole expression bigger by getting rid of the, turning that negative into a positive and replacing Sn, Sm, and Sk for k between, for k between m and n minus 1 with that constant c. That's the absolute largest any of those can be. So by replacing all the negative signs with keeping all the non-negative terms, Bn, Bm, and Bk minus Bk minus 1, all non-negative, right? I'll increase the overall expression by replacing Sn, Sm minus 1, Sk with c, because that's about when we get everything larger, right? 
So now I can say this is less than or equal to a constant C by the virtue of the fact that these are all non-negative, right? And then absolute value of BN. And then I'm going to have a minus, uh, turn it into a plus, so plus BM. That makes it bigger, right? Instead of minus, make it plus. And then what? And then the sum, K goes from M up to N minus 1 of BK minus BK plus 1 which is a telescopic sum, right? And what is it telescope to? Well, let's think. So the, the, very, la the very last term is BM, and the, the very first term is BM, and the very last term is going to be a BN. So this is going to telescope over here. This telescopes to just BM minus BN. Now the BNs are going to cancel, and you should have twice BM. So this is less than or equal to, less than or equal to a constant C times twice B. M, but M is bigger than this value of N, so this is strictly less than what? This is strictly less than C times epsilon over 2C, which is just going to be equal to epsilon. So for M and N bigger than or equal to N, this, the, uh, these partial sums over here are less than epsilon. So that proves that this series is a Cauchy, this is a Cauchy sequence over here. So by the Cauchy criterion, the series converges. So by Cauchy, we converge. By Cauchy, we converge. And that's the end of the proof. Now, uh, the immediate application of this is the following. So one automatic thing is that if the BN decrease to zero, and they decrease, then the sum k goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k BK converges. That's the alternating series test because now I know these are monotonically decreasing to zero. That's just like condition two. Now, what are the partial sums of this alternating series over here? Well, it's either going to be a one, negative one, zero, one, negative one, zero. Those partial sums can never get large because, when, I, for example, when k is equal to one, I have negative one. Then when I have negative one plus one, that's zero. Then I have a negative one plus one, negative one plus one. So it's going to alternate between negative one and positive one. So the partial sums of the negative one to the n series are bounded. So the alternating series test follows immediately from the Abel test for convergence. Thank you very much.